Ich würde mir gerne noch äh, ein Video ansehen, äh, was ich eigentlich gestern gucken wollte, aber das äh, möchte ich heute noch tun. Weil nämlich Dan hat diese wunderschönen Pedale äh, getestet und ich habe sie gesehen auf dem Tisch und ich wollte wissen, was dahinter steckt. Weil das ist nämlich äh, keine große, krasse, renommierte Firma, sondern eine Familie scheinbar, die im Rennsport unterwegs ist. Und die hat die konstruiert. Und da will ich gerne mal wissen, wie die sind. The fanciest pedal sets on the market, the Pro Pedals GT by Simtrax. The usual disclaimer first, these pedals were provided by Simtrax for this review, but they do not get to see the video before it's posted and all the opinions are my own. Simtrax actually has a long history in racing. In ich weiß gar nicht, ob Dan das nicht als Werbung deklarieren müsste, weil ich habe nämlich gestern, witzigerweise, hat mir gestern jemand geschrieben bei YouTube, weil wir deklarieren ja unsere Videos immer mit Werbung und von wem das kommt. Und da hat jemand gestern sich darüber beschwert, weil das Werbung ist. Also es ist ja nicht Werbung, weil ich bezahlt werde, Werbung, sondern weil man das deklarieren muss als Werbung. Also mal um, wo ich das gerade, das fällt mir jetzt gerade äh, ein. Also ich bin verpflichtet, gesetzlich verpflichtet, das als Werbung zu deklarieren, weil mir diese Produkte zugesendet wurden. Das heißt nicht, dass ich bezahlt werde und das deklariere ich vorher auch immer, dass ich keine Auflagen dafür habe. Ich weiß gar nicht, ob der das nicht auch machen müsste. In der Theorie schon. In the 70s to 90s. And they also launched RS5 Model Sport in 2001 for high-end 1 to 5 scale RC cars. And those RC cars from Simtrax or from the company behind Simtrax, they are super advanced and have high-end features that you also find on real race cars. I actually did a little bit of RC car racing when I was younger and I know the company RS5 Model Sport. So it was kind of funny to now see them in the sim racing world. And I do think that Simtrax knowledge of RC cars is very evident in these pedals. The build quality is insanely high. It's pretty much perfect. There are a few things that I don't like, but we'll talk about that later. But through the bank, the construction, the engineering, the build is just perfect. Let's talk about the price first. These are actually really expensive. The three pedal set is 1,327 euros, including taxes here in Germany. You can get a two pedal set for 1,073 euros. And if you want to buy their pedal plates, 178 euros. Yeah, like I said, build quality is absolutely phenomenal. It's all made from CNC billet aluminum. And the pedals are, they are surprisingly light. Like it feels like they weigh nothing. I didn't measure them because like, who cares about the weight of pedals in the end? But when you first take them in your hand, it's, it's ridiculous they are also super rigid there's no flex at all like you can try to find any flex as as hard as you can there's nothing in here the rods die sehen so schön aus ne das sind die für, für mich persönlich optisch die schönsten and pedale shafts are all made out of steel and they use ball bearings and all pivot points for smooth operation i also do think that visually these pedals are very pleasing not that jo. that should be a major factor to decide which pedals you buy but it's always easier to justify the cost when you buy something that just looks so amazing like this the packaging also is very nice wieso nimmt dan eigentlich um 13:43 uh, eine review auf dan musst du nicht arbeiten comes with tools everything is laid out in that box perfectly fine wahrscheinlich urlaub It comes with a great manual. You just directly notice that there was a lot of attention to detail and a lot of thought put into these. The electronics are actually embedded in the throttle pedal. You have ich finde übrigens die Schleichwerbung von Dan äh, sehr schön für das neue GSI Wheel. The USB connector and the <laughs> connectors for the clutch and the brake. And the electronics are embedded in this. This is really nice for EMI because it will keep all the electric noise. Obwohl, nee, ist nicht das neue, es ist das davor outside of the pedals and I've had no problems with these pedals so that works really well. The base plate also is very nice. I did have a little bit of creaking first when I put it together but after like two hours of driving when everything set into the correct position I guess that disappeared. I do think the price of 178 euros is just too high for such a base plate though it's I get it when you have fancy pedals and they cost a little more yes but a base plate for 180 euros Honestly, I would just buy something else. But I think we'll go through the individual pedals. I'll show you what you can adjust. And for that, we will start with the throttle pedal. On every pedal, you can adjust the angle of the whole pedal set with these preset holes. So you cannot change it like continuously, but there are several presets Moment. for the angle. I think that should not be a big problem. Everybody will find a proper position for this. And we do have elongated holes to slightly adjust the front back position. And the pedal plate on the throttle pedal is actually, it's a single part, the pedal arm and the pedal face. So you cannot adjust anything here. It kind of does look a little bit like the Mac Pro, I think. Definitely looks nice, but it is <laughs> not very comfortable if you drive without shoes. It's not really a big problem on the throttle because you will not put insanely high pressure on this 
but on the brake it kind of becomes uncomfortable. What you actually can adjust is the preload onto the spring using this little little nut on the back here. You can also adjust where the rod attaches to the pedal arm. So the higher this is, the stronger the throttle pedal will be. Typical problem that I have with most pedals, I think the resistance is not high enough. I wish a stronger spring was an option here. It <laughs> Gefühlt kommt das bei jeder Pedale bei Dan. Does not come with any other spring though. I am on the highest position with quite a bit of preload and it's it's okay for me, but I wish it was a bit stronger. Then to adjust the pedal travel or throw, it's very, very easy. You have this little nut in the front that you can screw in to get less travel. And then the last thing to adjust on the throttle pedal is actually the gain of the load cell amplifier. I don't Ooh. really know why they put this on here. I guess to quickly adjust the brake force with the potentiometer. I just always had it on the maximum position and then adjusted everything in the software. If you know RC cars, you're probably familiar with this unit. I'm not 100% sure if it's really the case, but it looks exactly like the dampers you find in those RC cars. So the throttle pedal actually has a spring and a damper in one unit. And it feels really nice. The damping here is not adjustable, but I think the default setting feels very nice. This is definitely one of the nicer throttle pedals that I've used. And I think if I would place the spring with a stronger one this could probably be the best throttle pedal that i know one downside they do use a potentiometer that is per se not really a downside but this thing will wear and it's just a matter of time till the potentiometer breaks this is a very high quality potentiometer from vishai but still these things just will not last forever so keep that in mind the replacement should be super easy it's a standard part that you can buy for a few bucks but still i always prefer to see hall sensors or load cells on the throttle. But it definitely kind of looks cool how you operate this potentiometer. All right, let's move on to the more interesting part, the brake pedal. We do have the typical 200 kilogram load cell being used here. And there are tons of configurations available for the elastomers stack. They do use elastomers. There's no spring option in the package. If you really want to, you can get aftermarket springs if you prefer the feeling of springs. But they designed the pedals for elastomers. And there are tons of options. You have the little spring on top here to simulate that brake pad to brake disc gap. I'm typically not an insanely huge fan to use it like that because the idea behind this is like that you have a dead zone in this area but I like to use this for the trail braking already. That feels better to me. Then you have different elastomers in different sizes and strength in the box. There are literally unlimited combinations you can do here. They also have a very very good manual with several suggestions what you can use. I think mm. this is a GT car setting. It's medium travel and feels pretty good. If you want to change something on the elastomer stack, it's relatively simple. You have these two screws here in the front that basically are one of the end stops for the pedal. So you need to release these. And then there's one screw for the hydraulic damper that, by the way, is adjustable via this tiny screw. I think the newer versions of the pedals actually come with a non-adjustable hydraulic damper, but more on that later. So to get access to the elastomer stack, all you do is like remove the damper pretty much or like the rear mounting point for the hydraulic damper so take out this screw and then the whole unit basically gets oh, yeah. disassembled like that and then you can easily access the elastomer stack put in different elastomers That's whatever good. i noticed one thing that i did not really like about the pedals the brake didn't feel perfectly smooth because of the hydraulic damper because if you actually move this it feels like as if you go with a tool over the thread of a screw. In general, I'm not an insanely big fan of dampers on brake pedals. So what I did when I used the pedals is I just removed the damper. For that, you just need to loosen this little nut here and then you can take out the damper and then the pedal is perfectly smooth. And I personally preferred the feel without the damper. But play around with it. Maybe the new... No <laughs> okay, Chris, du eine Testunit hingestellt, probierst du aus. Nah. Das werden wir jetzt erstmal optimieren. Raus, weg, das kann weg, raus, raus. Gut, jetzt sind wir, das ist gut. An adjustable damper is actually better and doesn't have this feeling with those little steps in it. But if it does and you don't like it, remove the damper and try again. Then in the rear, the elastomer stack pushes against this part here. And that is actually mounted with ball bearings to the rear of the pedal set and pushes in the back onto the load cell. I think it's a pretty clever construction. It will give a very linear feel of pressure to game output. There's also this little screw here that puts some preload on this assembly. So you don't want to have a lot of play, just a tiny bit, not too much preload on it, because in the end, the preload will come from the elastomer stack. As for the rest of the adjustment, you do get the same angle of the pedal adjustment with these different holes on this bracket. You can actually adjust the height of the pedal face here. 
in three positions. You can see it here in the rear. There nice. are three holes for the screws. You cannot adjust the angle of the pedal face only indirectly by changing the angle of the whole pedal. And newer versions of the pedals also come with different spacers that allow you to achieve a two-stage braking. So they will allow a certain mm. amount of compression of the elastomers and then basically become solid. That has two advantages. First, it will save the elastomers from wearing. And second, I personally really like this two-stage feeling where the pedal becomes very stiff after some pressure because I think that is very nice if you adjust that point to 80% or something to feel where in the brake pressure range you are right now. There's no mechanical end stop on the brake, but that is also something that you typically don't find on brakes. But yeah, I think that's it for the brake. Here on this version, there's also the screw to adjust the hydraulic damping. But like I said, I was not a big fan of this, so I just took the damper out. But play around with it. If you get an older version of the pedals, you can adjust it. If you get a newer one, then it will have a fixed setting for the damping. Last but not least, the clutch. Similar to the throttle pedal, we do have the angle adjustment of the whole pedal. We do have an end stop adjustment. We can adjust the pedal face height in three positions, similar to the brake here. And the clutch feels very, very nice. I think the bite point emulation is probably the best that I've seen on any pedal so far. It feels very natural. Yeah. It feels like in a real car. Again, I'm not the best expert when it comes to clutches, but this is the one that feels the best to me. We do have a potentiometer to measure the pedal travel. And this is the one thing that I really think is not done very well on these pedals. It's like a little connector that just goes onto the pins from the clutch potentiometer, but it also, it, yeah, no. <laughs> it does have a little okay sticker, <laughs> but I think no. I think a not okay would be more appropriate for this. But again, if it's stationary, it's unlikely that this will rattle off the clutch if you do use motion. I don't know. It's not an insanely secure connection, but you can always just solder it onto here. But this definitely is something that I would change in the design because that just is not done very well. Then we do have a damper here, non-adjustable, and we do have the spring to add the resistance in the bottom here. Ooh, and sure. then we have this mechanism in the rear that kind of reminds me of those oil pumps or whatever it is. It definitely looks cool and the clutch feels just very good, to be honest. All right, let's reconnect the pedals and I'll quickly show you the software. The software actually is really nice, can do everything. <laughs> so witzig, dass irgendwie jeder es hinkriegt, bessere, also besser aussehendere Software zu machen als VRS. <laughs> that you want from a software. You have a two-point calibration for the throttle and the clutch. So you basically go to the rest position, click this, then you go to the end position, click this, and that's the calibration. The calibration is stored in hardware, so iRacing will recognize it. Unlike on some other pedals where iRacing will just ignore the calibration, so that is done very well. On the brake, you just do calibrate the idle position, and then you can adjust the maximum brake force with this setting here. So let's say we want six kilograms of brake. Uh, you could do that. The maximum pressure is very high. You can go to 100 maximum brake force. Keep in mind, the adjustment potentiometer on the throttle pedal will adjust your calibration. So if you want to use this thing, then set it to your desired position and then do the calibration because as you can see, it, it actually affects the zero point as well. So, so yeah, I just don't really know what this is for, to be honest. I think it's just way more convenient to configure everything in software. I mean, in theory, if you do adjust the gain of the load cell amplifier, you get a better signal to noise ratio on the ADC, but we are talking about sim racing pedals. It's, it's irrelevant here. Resolution, by the way, is 16 bit more than sufficient. And you can do custom curves if you want to here, for example, this is linear, then you can do a one point calibration unfortunately you cannot click this this dot here and move it around you need to make it very awkwardly using these bars and even more awkwardly if you want to use multi-point because then you go through the dots with this and then Ooh. you can adjust adjust it Ooh. with this it's yeah i don't know what it is with sim racing software and that it has to be a giant pain to use but it seems to be the case through the bank with most products so <laughs> At least it's there. It's not like you're gonna adjust it all the time. So I think it's a minor inconvenience, but not really a deal breaker or anything. Then once you're done, you can save the settings to the pedal. You can also load settings from the pedal. You can create different profiles for different cars. And then... Das könnte man auf jeden Fall ein bisschen schöner machen. Quickly load these to the pedals. You can also adjust the brake output here to less than 100%. I mean, on a good pedal set like that, just don't use tricks like that. Just train your muscle memory properly and don't... Oh, man! Yeah, it's yeah good. Use stuff like that. But if you want to, make sure to calibrate the brake in-game using 100. 
and then reduce it afterwards. Because if you set it to, let's say, 78, and then you do the calibration and the game thinks 78 is 100%, you get the problem. On track, I've always felt very comfortable with the pedals. I mean, in the end, it is an elastomer-based pedal set like many others on the market. So it feels great. If you like the response from an elastomer, you will like these pedals. There have been some discussions that elastomers are worse than springs, but on a proper load cell pedal, it doesn't really make such a big difference, to be honest. I mean, yes, an elastomer can wear quicker than a spring, especially if you don't limit the compression like on these. But in the end, even if the elastomer does not have the perfect reproducible force to travel ratio, it's not really a big problem. On a break, your muscle memory basically learns the pressure you put onto the pedal face. Like it will be like, okay, I need to push this with 50 kilogram. It will not learn that, okay, I will push this with 50 kilogram and the pedal arm should travel 18 millimeters. Whether it travels 18 millimeters or 19 or 17, I doubt that anybody will ever be able to feel this difference in the DJ. <laughs> ich sehe die Kommentare schon. Doch! Generation and the wear of the elastomers. Even if after hitting your threshold this slightly changes, you do have to learn and remember the pressure you put onto the load cell and not the travel. So in my personal opinion, elastomers are just as fine as springs. They do have their advantages, they do have their disadvantages, but there's no better or worse from those two. I always like the option when a manufacturer just gives you both and then you can try and see what you like better, but there are only elastomers in the box with these. I think the competition these days also is pretty strong. There are definitely pedals that cost way less than these pedals, which will perform just as well. But what you typically do not get with these other pedals is this insanely high build quality and attention to detail. Will this affect close. your lap time? No, but if you want to spend the money on a very well engineered and very well machined and built pedal set, then yeah, this is really nice. But to name a few alternatives that come to my mind are, of course, the VRS pedals, basically half the price and used by a lot of the eSport pros. So these are really nice pedals as well. Halber Preis, die sind doch gerade teurer geworden. I've done a review if you want to check that out. Or the Imsim Talento, also cheaper, definitely worse build quality, no proper software support, no hardware calibration, stuff like that. But still, the performance will probably be very similar on track. Or stuff like the SimGrade VX Pro or a pedal set that definitely needs to be mentioned here is the SimMagic P1000. Excellent pedal set in my opinion. Also roughly half the price of these with oh. also very good build quality and some nice features like haptic feedback that you cannot add on these. So this definitely is like a luxury item where you will pay a premium to get this build quality whether this is worth it to you or not i cannot decide that for you i think just looking at these pedals as an engineer myself it just makes me happy <laughs> but do you need it to be quick on track no definitely not so to sum it up i can recommend these pedals i did not really like the hydraulic damping on the brake so i just removed that and then the pedal felt significantly smoother to me i am a really big fan of the throttle for most people the pressure that you get from the spring is probably more than good enough i'm always a little bit picky when it comes to the throttle especially when it's not giving me the high forces that i want but i think for most people this is more than good enough it's definitely stronger than the vrs pedals and overall it's just a really nice pedal set with a premium price that you will notice in the build quality so yeah that's it for this review if you have any questions leave them down in the comments down below if you like the video give it a thumbs up maybe subscribe to the channel and hope to see you all in the next one bye 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 dan danke da hauen wir aber sowas schon äh, ein däumchen drauf junge der entspricht glaube ich schon viele jahre englisch also der ist sehr sehr gut sehr sehr gutes englisch sehr sehr gutes englisch